Hello everyone, welcome to Southern Wreaths. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this really large, beautiful sunflower wreath. These are the supplies I used to make this wreath. I'm starting with an 18 inch wire frame. I got this from Dollar Tree. It only has three rings, so I do my ties a little different. Um, I started at a crossbar. I lay the pipe cleaner along and where it ends I add the next one. It's about every five inches. And I'm going to do that all the way around the inside and the outside. You can see I twist three times and I do it pretty tight. And then I just start at a crossbar that's kind of in between two of the pipe cleaners. Just so they're not all lined up. And again, I'm twisting three times. Lay it across. Where it ends, I add my next one. And you can always measure it if you'd rather measure it. I went ahead and gathered up my 21 inch white mesh and attached it with a zip tie and then trimmed it away. I do this to the left of a pipe cleaner. Oh, and I end up with 20 ties. And I'm just gonna make poofs going around the outside to begin. And I'm doing them at 12 inches and I'm just using my mat to measure it. There's my kitty. <laughs> I'm only twisting once because I'm gonna add mesh. And then once I'm done with the outside, I'm gonna push all the ties all the way and then op open the center ties. And then I'll just pull the mesh up to the closest pipe cleaner and just add it in, just twist once so I can continue around the inside. I don't want a diagonal um, poof. All right, and I'm doing this exactly the same way as I did the outside, twisting once and then I like to fluff as I go. And then for the last one, I'm gonna open up the first pipe cleaner that I added mesh to and add this into it. Again, twisting once, and this just makes it seamless. So where you started is where you end. And then I'll just trim that away. I push the mesh to the back and then attach it to the wire frame with the tie. And you can use this space with many different wreaths. You can do curls on top or ruffles on top, or you can just add more poofs or just leave it the way you like it or like it is and add lots of ribbon. And I always like to trim away the excess mesh so the wreath sits flat. All right, I decided to go with this brown jute mesh with the gold lines through it. And then this really pretty yellow mesh. It's like a yellowy orange color with white lines in it. I thought these were perfect for a sunflower wreath, and I'm just going to trim off the end because it was pretty rough. And I'm going to cut these at 24 inches. I like to use my mat and my rotary cutter, and I like to slide it towards the center before I cut, just so I don't get lines in the same spot over and over again. And I'll cut enough to fill up the wreath, and that came out to 20 ties, yeah. 20 ties but I do different on the outside than the inside because I want the center to come up further and I'll show you that in a minute. Alright to ruffle it I just add something heavy to the end and then I just gather it all together in my hand. Kind of like accordion folding. It reminds me of either a bow tie or a butterfly when you're done. And then I'm going to open the tie and add the mesh in. The center ones I'm going to add one of each mesh just to give it more height in the middle. And you can either do these together, um, you can stick them in your Bodavra, or you can just do like I'm doing where you put one in and then add the other one on top. You just don't want to mess with the mesh as much as possible because the more you mess with it, the worse it looks. And I like to fold the beginning and end if the mesh doesn't have a really nice beginning or end <laughs> to it um, because when it gets really messy, it'll fray and that's one way to keep your fraying down on your wreath where you can't really see it because it's tucked under. But then I just open the uh, tie back up and add the second mesh and I'm giving it one good twist because I'm still going to add ribbon and then I'm just going to fan out all of the mesh. And I just do that by slightly overlapping 
the beginning and end. It just makes it look nice. Reminds me of a coffee filter. And you can mess with it as much as you want. And here I'll show you again what I did. If anyone's interested in following me on social media, you can find me on Instagram at Southern Wreaths More, on Facebook at Southern Wreaths, and I also have a Facebook group called Southern Wreaths and More. I would love to see any of the wreaths you've made, especially if you do any um, based on my videos. That would be amazing. Um, I also have all of these links in the description below. I'm alternating which one I put on top and which one's on the bottom. And this just makes sure you get even amounts of both. Okay, so do the, to do the outside ones, I'm just going to alternate each section. So only one 24-inch piece of uh, mesh is going into each tie. So I just open it and I add the one brown piece in. And then I twist it once, I ruffle it out, and then I move on to the next section. And I'll go around the outside and do this for the whole way around. Again, alternating the brown and the yellow. I thought the yellow was so perfect to go with sunflowers. It's not too yellow and it's not too orange. It's like the perfect balance. Yeah. And this wreath is really large. It measures 32 inches across when it's finished. This is what it looks like before I add any ribbon. So I decided to use this gold, like it's a yellow gold ribbon. I, I like the way it matched some of the tones in the sunflower ribbon. You can see to the side here. And it kind of matched with the brown. And I just like to use this piece of cardboard to wrap my ribbon around. This just makes it easier for me to cut it faster. I just slide my scissors in on each end and I end up with the perfect piece. Um, these are actually 13 inches, not 12 inches like I normally do. Just because the wreath was bigger, I wanted the ribbons to be slightly longer. And then I'll just go through and dovetail the ends. And I just do that by folding it hot dog way and cutting from the outside towards the crease at, a, um, at an angle. And you can make it as steep or as shallow as you want when you cut your ribbon. Um, I ran out of the basket weave ribbon, so I supplement this darker brown ribbon, which ended up working great. Um, I have them in two separate piles because I wanted to make sure I distributed the darker ribbon evenly through the wreath. And I just gather it and fold it in half and where it creases I'll pinch it. And I did decide to go with three pieces of ribbon in each section. This is a really full wreath. So I twist it three times and I don't open my ties. You can if you want. And then I just like to use a glue stick or you can also use a pen or even your finger to roll down the pipe cleaners. And then I'll just spread the ribbons apart. I usually do an X with two of the ribbons and then leave one going straight across. Kind of like a starburst effect. And then I'll show you again what I do. Um, for the basket weave, I didn't dovetail the ends. I kept them square. I just didn't like the way it looked when I dovetailed it. And then I'll twist three times after I put it in there and roll down the center. And I'll go around and do this for the, the whole entire wreath. And that's what it looks like when it's done. And then I had these beautiful sunflowers. I picked these up at Old Time Pottery. Now I'm just trimming away the ones I want to use. I thought they matched great with the sign. The sign isn't actually wood. Um, it's kind of like a plastic. But it's also kind of like styrofoam. I think it's kind of like what the signs you see on the side of the road are made of. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's really sturdy and waterproof, which is nice. <laughs> and I just stuck the sunflowers in there where I wanted them to be in the end. They're not actually attached yet. And then I just used the piece of the ribbon spool and just cut some cardboard rectangles so I can fold them to make cushion for the staples so they don't stick all the way through. I like to staple my pipe cleaners to my signs if I can. You can glue them if you want. 
or you can always poke holes on the edges and use wire. Do whatever works for you. After you make your first staple, you wanna make sure it's not going through and adjust if you need to. And after I staple them, I like to twist. I don't know why. I just feel like it gives it more security. I don't know if it does. And I'll do that on either side. And then to attach it, I'll find where I want it to be and then I'll just feed the pipe cleaners through to the back and wrap it around the wire frame. And I twist about three or four times and then when I'm done with the wreath, I'll go back through and make sure the there's no pipe cleaner sticking out or anything. Just to clean it up a little bit and make it look nicer. I'm not too big on covering the back of my wreaths. If someone requested it, I'm sure I would, but I don't find it necessary. So to attach my flowers, I didn't want to use any hot glue. I don't really like gluing flowers to mesh. I'm just putting the pipe cleaner around the stem and luckily these flowers are really sturdy so I could wrap it around where it connects and it didn't pop off or anything. And then now I've created a pick so I can just stick it through to the back. You can also leave the stems longer and attach it with zip ties if you want. And I'm doing the same thing I did with the sign. I'm just wrapping it around the frame. And if you add flowers to your wreath and you find that they want to pop off, all you have to do is put a little bit of hot glue at the end and then let them dry. And when you attach them, they won't come apart, especially if you use Gorilla Glue Sticks. Those are my favorite. They hold really well. So I decided I needed some greenery behind these flowers. Now I will hot glue to the actual flower. I don't like to hot glue to the mesh. So I just add a little bit and then push it against the back of the flower wherever I want the, the um, you know, leaf to poke out up. And I varied how many I put or what size I put with which flower. Make it your own. And I really love these leaves with the different colors of green. They were really pretty. This just made the flowers pop off the wreath a little bit better. But that's it. That's how I made my gigantic sunflower wreath. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Or you can always email me at craftingwithlee at yahoo.com. Thank you so much for watching. And if y'all learned anything today or like my video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.